thousand different models of jets. I well, can't remember them all. So say that. Yeah. So when I ask you numbers, say I fly twenty-seven yeah. different models of jets. Yeah, I look them up when I get in there. And I'll ask you how many hours you've got, shit like that. Okay. Whatever. Okay. We're on. Hi. So this is Mark at Skywagon University, and we thought today we'd go a bit bigger. So this is Mike Bigler, who charters, but we're going to get detail on that. Three jets, one of which is this Premier Two. Premier 1A. There is no such thing as a Premier 2. Oh, I've got double vision on that line there. <laughs> so keep it in. Uh, Premier 1, you can tell I know nothing about these, and I'm not going to pretend I do. So we're going to be talking to Mike about uh, the plane and having a little bit of a look around it. So not knowing much about them, I'm just going to interrogate Mike and ask him, so what year is it? What model is it? What, what engines does it have? That sort of thing. It's a 2012 Beach Premier 1A. It's built, it was originally built by Beechcraft, now owned by Textron. Uh, and they quit building them, and I just said that incorrectly, it's a 2009. They quit building them in 2012. So they didn't make them anymore? No. Oh. Um, it was an airplane that was a bit ahead of its time when it was built from a construction standpoint because it has an entirely carbon fiber fuselage. Oh, does it? It does. It's aluminum wings and tail. It's a carbon, carbon fiber fuselage, um, which is extremely strong. It's like riding in a roll cage. The drawback is it's damn near impossible to repair okay. and it takes a very special paint process to paint one. So uh, painting these things is expensive. Um, they're a fantastic airplane. I love them. They fly like a fighter jet. They are twitchy. How many passengers? So I can put two up front and I can put six in the back. It's a 465 knot cruise airplane. And I can climb out of here on a day like today. I could put the three of us in it and I can climb out of here at 5,000 feet a minute and go straight to 41,000. Damn. Yeah. A bit different to what we normally talk about. Yeah. It's, it's a little rocket ship and it's fun to fly, but it's an airplane that can, that can bite a low time pilot or a, somebody that's not used to swept wings. What would make it um, twitchy? Say you were flying oh. used to a citation or something. What would make this twitchy or different? So, this citation over here is also ours. And if you were to put them dead side by side and look at them, the first thing you'd notice is the citation's got a straight wing. So it's real forgiving. It also, if you looked at them dead from the front side by side, one is it has trailing link gear, which makes it land very smooth and handle very well. And the gear track, the width between the main gear is wide on it and the, yes and the gear are short so all of its handling characteristics are really smooth the premier does not have trailing link it's got straight legs which makes makes them stiff and the gear track is narrow and it has a swept wing so that's where you get the speed you get one or the other you get stability or speed you don't get both so the the thing that makes this thing tricky on the ground for people is the stiff legs make it land hard. Landing it, you mean? Landing, it lands hard. Okay. It actually taxis a little hard. But in a crosswind, it's not friendly because it's what it does with the swept wing and the narrow gear track is when you, let's say we're setting the left wheel down first into a left crosswind and bring the right gear down, it just tries to keep going on over. Not no, 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 good. Not good. Um, it's caught my attention on more than one occasion. And you're not a low time pilot. And I'm not, I've got over, I've got over 10,000 hours and I've been flying jets since I had 500 hours. So it's, this oh, is and a lot of different types. And a lot, and I fly 27 different models of jets. So there's, I have a lot of time doing this. This is all I do. And so when I went to the premiere originally, I was an airplane before this one. Um, and I started really understanding the airplane, I realized why it can get people in trouble. The early premieres had a tendency of running off the end of the runway and everybody thought it was a bad designed airplane and it really wasn't. They proved it was poorly trained pilots or under trained pilots. Um, it literally, the comparison I use for people is if you gave your 16 year old child when they got their driver's license, the key to the Toyota Corolla it's like giving a, a pilot the keys to the citation. 
Not a Bugatti Veyron. This is like giving your 16 year old the keys to the Ferrari. Oh, okay. Okay. It really is. Now, Good. you take a guy like me who's a speed freak, you know, and grew up racing and grew up flying and all of these different things. I love it. I love the airplane. It is fast. It is comfortable. It's got a much bigger diameter cabin, so the passengers love it. Is it upright, standing? Uh, for Are most you? of us, yeah. I mean, I have, to bend my, I have to bend my head a little bit. We'll go inside of it. Okay. Um, but, and it's economical. So where this, this Citation's got Williams engines on it. This also has Williams engines on it. It's just got the next variant up, a little bigger engine. This airplane is a third fast, well, 30%. It's 30% faster than that Citation on 12% more fuel burn. Hmm. That's efficient. Yeah. I can do that math. What's and that's that, what's that in per hour for us piston people? Uh, what What do you mean per hour? How How much is it burning an hour? Yeah, yeah. I'm burning about 130 gallons an hour at cruise. 140 gallons an hour at cruise. Divided by six passengers. Divided by 400 knots. That's pretty economical. Yeah, it's very economical. Hmm. The drawback to the airplane, in my mind, is this little tiny wing. Marginally bigger than my Mooney. <laughs> Doesn't carry enough fuel. Yeah. So they'll tell you that it has a 1,200 nautical mile range. And I can squeeze that out of it eastbound by myself. The problem is, like all of these jets, with the exception of Falcon, all of these jets, when you start putting bodies in, you start taking fuel out. Right. Okay? Falcon makes their airplanes so that you can fill all the seats and fill the tanks. I don't know why everybody else does it. I truly don't, Mark. It makes no sense to me that the engineers don't do that, but that's just me. Mike, something's broken on the nose wheel. Okay. It's not broken. It looks broken. <laughs> it's disconnected so they can tow it with the tug. Okay. Otherwise, it... Well, that free cost it. Yes, it breaks the nose gear. So it's what we do for pre-flight. We come down here. And we hook this up like so, and now we're connected. So that's for flight. That is for flight. Okay. This airplane is not, cannot be taxied without this linkage hooked up. Oh, okay. It just, the front just shakes. It oh. won't, you can't steer it. It just shakes in a straight line. Wow. So it's very critical for the pilot to make sure that that thing is hooked up. And it's very critical on the ground to make sure that the ground crew know it has to be disconnected. A lot of jets are like this. Not all, but a lot of them have a disconnect. And then I will tell you, when you fly, when I fly into um, less than honorable foreign countries. Politically correct. <laughs> you put that. This goes with, with me in my suitcase. So that cannot be, you could not steal no, it like that. Because what happens is they take your pin and then they sell it back to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get that all the time. <laughs> Batteries are good, bleed air is on, temperature controls is turned down, standby gyro, engine anti ice we don't need, cabin signs, I'll turn their seatbelt signs on, seats are good, alley power I don't need, that's for the coffee pot, alright pressurization, pressurization is set, we're going to leave it because we're coming back here, normally on this system I would set the landing airports elevation and I never have to touch it. Oh, really? It has an auto scheduler in it. Nice. Okay. Lead air again is checked. Now we go through a master test system. So the first five I've already done because those are pre-start. Basically they're testing the fire loop system to make sure I have fire detect on startup. We're going to do flaps. So now we're over here. Those are good. This next one is a premier thing. This airplane has Along with ailerons, it has roll, roll spoilers, and it's a, it's a hydraulic system. So it has a bit test in it on the computer, and it has to be done before every takeoff. So, so what we're going to do, we're going to let this thing start its test. And it takes a moment. 
It's tied into the it's tied into the lift up system. It's tied into the roll spoilers, and it's tied into the speed brakes. Okay, so that light went out. So now I'm going to go. To the next step is test the speed brakes. Okay, that's good. Turn those off. Now watch your legs. I'm going to go full left. If you, you could probably feel it in your seat. The airplane's banging around. Everything out there is opening and closing and moving. That's good to the left side. We're going to go to the right side. And that's good. That test has to be done on every takeoff. Okay. All right. Stall warning. This thing has a stick pusher in it. So I'll show you. It's got a shaker. There's the shaker. And the tone. You hear the tone? Right. Okay. There's the second shaker. Now pull the yoke back and hold it for me. Oh wow, I thought you were gonna hold it. <laughs> It'll just push it forward for it, you. It pushes it over. Bam. Yeah, okay. That's an overspeed warning horn. Landing gear. That one tells me I'm out of trim for takeoff. So if I can fix that by moving the trim here. Okay, now I'm in takeoff. And that's all good. And those are all my pre-tests. So that's on that. Stab de-ice. This is that impulse system I was telling you about. We put it in auto and we leave it there. When it gets this ice detect light, come on, it's doing a self-test right now. But when this ice detect light comes on in flight, this will start to activate as long as it's in the auto position. Okay, so it's off until it's needed. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay, ECUs, those are my engine control units. Those are on. My rudder bias is good. Fuel's balanced. Engine instruments. Looks like everything is green and good. All right. Flight controls, watch yourself. Can't see them on this thing, but they work. All right, flaps. We're going to go to one notch of flaps. Autopilot I'll, text, I'll get while I'm taxiing. Let me grab an ATIS real quick. Okay, so, we're going to build a flight plan real quick. And we're going to go from Mather to Mather. And we'll just put in um, Squaw Valley for now. W, R, and Hangtown, which is, what is it, HNW? H, not one I use a lot, W, 2, okay, so there's my flight plan, all right, now we're going to go to performance, we're going to initialize my performance, so I'm already built into this, so I got three of you guys, all right, I've got no cargo, I've got 2,620 pounds of fuel, and we're going to call it, I don't know, we'll go to 11,000 feet, I guess, just for giggles. All right, so what this tells me is my takeoff weight is 11,790 pounds. It did the math. I can take off at 12.5, so we're fine. Okay? So I execute that. Then I go to takeoff. This is what I was explaining to you yesterday or earlier about the performance data. So we're using runway, RW, 22 right. Goes there. I happen to know that this runway is flat, so there's no slope in it. The winds are calm. I have no way of putting calm, so if I put in zero 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 slant zero zero, it'll do that, and it tells me I have no headwind and no left crosswind. So this will tell you what your crosswind component is. Wow, good. Which is really cool. Yeah, it is. Okay. My outside air temperature was 28, so I put 28 in there, and 29.96 on the altimeter goes in there, okay, now I take this, and I'm going to send this, so these are my V-speed, so it's telling me I have my anti-ice off, my flaps will be set at 10,
that's a gross takeoff weight and and runway uh, or weight takeoff field length. It says I'm going to need 4,051 feet, and there's 6,081 feet on 22 right. But you have to understand that's 4,000. 51 feet, accelerate go versus accelerate stop. As long as both engines are running, I'm going to be off in about 3,000 feet. Right. Okay, but that's what I'm required to have. Now, if you look at your screen and mine, here and here, we have nothing here, right? So my numbers are V1 is 107, VR is 110, and V2 is 122. So I'm going to send that, and it comes up, it populates the screen for me. Right here. Those are my V speeds. Now, as I start moving and you watch the airspeed tape, you're going to see those lines and those speeds correlate coming down the airspeed tape. That is brilliant. Okay. I'll bring up the command bars for my takeoff and go around. We're going to climb probably to 4,000 feet. So I'm setting 4,000 feet in your window there. And we climb this airplane at 230 knots. So if I look across my screen, I've got V-speeds, 107, 110, 122 posted. I'm going to climb at 230. I'm in takeoff go-around mode. We refer to this little box up here as the scoreboard. That tells us what we have set up. I'm going to climb to 4,000 feet, and it's going to be probably a left-hand turn to 150 or 090, because that's usually what they do here. Okay? All right. So, let me get over to ground. 121.85. Put that in legs. Good morning, Ground Premier 858 Quebec at the Jet Center with, what was it, Romeo? And I'd like to taxi runway 22 right, and we're going to be a local um, maintenance test flight. I'd like flight following, please. Trims are set all the way around. Altimeters were 96, correct? Yes, 96. And 96 once. Twice, three times. How many autopilots does it have? One. Some planes have like three. Correct. Okay. Now listen for this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to test our alerting system for ground procs, wind shear, and you'll hear it. Right here. Pull up. Wind shear. All right, calling tower. I'm sorry, I was on the other line. I couldn't, I couldn't respond. Say again your request. I know you wanted flight following. Okay, that's no worries. Premier 858, Quebec. We're doing a maintenance test flight. I'm at the Jet Center ready to taxi. Um, and I just like flight following. We'll be out towards, uh, between the cooling towers and Squaw Valley, probably. Premier 858, Quebec. Roger, runway 22 right taxi via Alpha and Bravo. Uh, what's the identifier again for Premier? PRM1. And it's uh, to two right Alpha Bravo, 858 Quebec. Premier, 858 Quebec. Departure frequency is 127.1, squawk 5331. I just want to verify that. You said 1271. Isn't it normally 27.4? Yeah, I misspoke. 127.4 and 5331. One two seven point four five three three one eight five eight Quebec. Thank you. Eva Star eight zero two Mayor Tower. All right, just our TCAS. Um, enter left so, base runway two two. On the TCAS right, on this airplane, this has resolution yeah. alert. Do you know what that? Or resol excuse me, resolution advisory. Do you know what that means? So if I have a TCAS alert that says, "Hey, there's an airplane there," if it gets too close, the resolution advisory tells me what to do about it. Oh, okay. so, so what I want you to do is I want you to watch your your uh, VSI on that side. And I'm going to test this thing, and it's also going to show up in here. It's going to, it'll show you a, a red and a yellow airplane down here, and it'll show it on here, but watch your VSI, and it's going to tell you what to do to fix the possible incursion. Traffic. See what it's telling you? It's telling you to go up. Clock. Do not, under any circumstances, yes. go down. Test okay. Yeah, because a lot of the problems with it is you don't know which way to turn when it's happening. You don't you don't know where they are. This tells you which way to go. And it's happening fast. And it's happening very fast. Correct. And most of the time you can't see them. You can't find them quick enough to to know where to go. 
Okay, transponder's done, radar we don't need. We are down to runway hot items. Premier 858 Quebec, a new squat code 4267, please. 4267, 858 Quebec. Premier 58 Quebec, runway 22 right, right downwind departure approved, clear for takeoff. All right, right downwind departure and clear to go 22 right, 58 Quebec. Okay, stall warnings on, pedo heats are on, ignitions are on, engine sync is off, lift up is unlocked in case we have to abort takeoff. Six, five, Romeo, NorCal. Lights and strobes are on, tell them we're taking off. Panel's clear, so that takes care of my lineup hot items. Diamond 876, Bravo, Romeo, we don't need that page. That's my after takeoff checklist. All right, we're taking off from 22 right. I see a 22 on the runway. I see 22 here, 22 here, 22 here, 22 here. So we're going the right direction. Everybody ready? Yep. All right, power set, engines are all in the green. Airspeed's alive two times. 380 knots, cross-checked. B1, and rotate. How's it rate? You're up. Yeah, you damper on. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. It's just an airplane. God, it's quiet and smooth. Oh, you get up to altitude. You get up to 35,000 feet. You can take your headsets off. You don't even need them. Okay. 2 plus 10. Flaps are coming up. Power is set for climb. Ignitions are coming off. Engine sync's coming on. Lift up is locked. Landing lights are off. And that is my entire after takeoff checklist right here. Go. From your 5 come back. Start your right turn. Contact NorCal. You have a good day. Talk to you on the way back. Into the turn and talk to you in a few minutes. 5 8 back. What speed did it rotate at? 111. Morning, NorCal. Premier 85, Quebec, 1700, climbing. Oh, let's go on up to about 10.5 uh, if, we, if we can for a maintenance test flight. Morning, 85, Quebec, NorCal departure, radar contact, altimeter 2908. Uh, resume on navigation, the same team via 400 below 6000 for now. Navy down going to Squaw Valley or the Palisades. Yeah, out or below 6,000, we'll go up towards Squaw, maybe over to Hangtown and then back. We're doing a maintenance flight. Uh, November 5, Eagle Back, Roger. Expect higher passengers from traffic. About 8 miles northeast of you now, southbound 7,500 to 20 seconds. Roger that. 5, Eagle Back. They literally come up. Boy 37, 77. Hey, uh, now. 1.9 climbing. We're away from there. I literally can't uh, in the end. Yeah, I know. We're away from the airport, we're at 230 knots, I go to flight level change, I'll hold my 230 for my climb. I maintain 6,000, boy, 37,000. And if I'm just not feeling real adventurous, I go to here, and the autopilot's got the airplane. And we're done. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, that is impressive, I gotta say. The one that would bite you on this airplane is the 250 speed limit below 10,000. Uh, yeah. This thing will run through it before I get out of the traffic pattern. So we're doing 239 now. Yeah, I'm looking for a twin Cessna coming towards me here. Okay, Bridge Crew Jack 178 has Romeo and Executive Order returning now. Jack 178, Cal Fridge, Roger. Uh, resume on navigation. I don't see him. Oh, navigation. He's behind us now. Number 5 8 Quebec, maintain VFR below 7,000. VFR below 7, 5 8 Quebec. Because all I'm doing is telling the autopilot what I want it to do. Highway 3777, contact approach on 1 2 Full boat selector panel. 1 2 3 point 7, way 37 7. It's really not technically the autopilot, because it's really telling me, or I'm telling the command bars what I want them to do. Whether I'm hand flying it, or on auto. Okay. Uh, Romeo, trim left heading 3 2 here. You use the boat selector to tell what you want to do. I just told it to climb at 1,000 feet a minute to 7,000 feet from 6,000 feet. It's going to do it and it's going to level off on its own. 
Speeding already. Whoops, they're 280 knots below 10. It does it so easy. I mean, we're back at Placerville, pretty much. November 6, Rob Romeo, uh, turn left heading 25, George on the 2 right final first course. Well, I can take off, not that I do it, but I can take off, uh, can take off and lose an engine on takeoff. I'll be Quebec, altitude due discretion. All right, altitude by discretion. We'll go up to 10 fire for a minute, 5 at Quebec. I do know where Crew check 170, contact exact tower, 119.5. Lose an engine on takeoff? 19.5, crew check. I like to climb to 25,000 feet and fly wherever you want to go on one. On half the gas. It just doesn't fly real, you know, straight. Well, it wouldn't be half the gas, would it? Because it would be working harder. Correct. But if you look at your um, VSI over there. Number 6, Bob, Romeo, 5 miles, sound approach, 6, maintain. We're going to be climbing at 4,000 feet a minute, all the way to the right. All the way clear. Yeah. We're climbing at 4,000 feet a minute. Number three, Julie, if I turn you, will you have to restart your On a 90 line? degree day. Can, can you accept 8,000 just for a bit for traffic? November 6, Bob Romeo, contact Major Tower. Contact Major Tower, uh, it's all possible. Yeah. And November 5, you go back, contact Oakland Center, 127.95. 2795, 5, they come back today. There's Placerville. Morning, I'll come from Mary 5 8 Quebec with you, 10,500 on a maintenance test flight. Delaware 8 5 8 Quebec, Oakland Center, Sacramento Altimeter, 2997. 2997. Delaware 8 5 Quebec, what's your destination? We're just doing a maintenance flight, we'll be going back into Mather. Better. So if you look here, this is my flight plan. It says I'll be at Squaw Valley in five minutes, back to Hangtown in 11, and back to Mather in 21 if I do the whole loop. And it's calculated already for me. It says I'm going to land with 1,940 pounds of fuel or a total weight of 11,100 pounds. Okay? So if I take that and I go back into performance and go to my approach, I'm going to use my same weather because the weather really hasn't changed, right? So 28 degrees and 4997. So I'm going to go to there. Center, now 236, Romeo Papa, the same to fly. Oops, that's where it's going. Number 236, Romeo Papa, Oakland Center, Roger. Then we go here, and we send it again. And you're going to get these numbers pop up when we get down to that part of the airspeed Romeo tape. Papa, so my approach speed Romeo. will be 120 knots, my landing speed will be 115. And it's based on my weight. All new tapes, according to everything that it just... Correct. Yeah. So you just put it all in and it does it. Like I said, I can type now. I couldn't type when I was seventh grade. <laughs> yeah. So we can't go any faster down here because we're gonna redline. I got I I got a lot of power left. But we're doing three hundred and seventy eight knots true. At ten thousand feet. And you're And I'm back out of the detent so I don't overspeed. But you have to go high. I gotta go high. And with a jet engine, the higher you go, the less fuel it burns. It's way more efficient. So that's why we fly high. It's just a whole other world, I'll tell you, from what I'm used to. But it does the same thing. It yeah. does the same thing as your Mooney does. One of the things I like to teach to, to young pilots, because they get overwhelmed by this, is I have a way of breaking down avionics it's lowest common denominator and explaining to people that there's only so many ways you can make these boxes talk to each other and if you understand that it doesn't matter whether it's this or a Honeywell or a Garmin or the six pack in your Mooney it still works the same way right and once people get that philosophy into their mind it's actually pretty simple and I'll come from Mary 5 8 Quebec we're going to make a right hand turn back towards Hangtown and then uh, into Mayfair Mary 5 8 Quebec right thank you Go to heading mode. Oakland, good it's afternoon. Been a little bug. We are okay, Mark, test question. And I don't expect you to get the answer. Oakland Center just for trivial reasons. Five arrival, landing what are, what instrument do you have in your airplane that is right, not on this by panel? Slammer, five arrival, descending, uh, landing south, Air Flight 627. No, instrument. Uh, think, of your, think of your six pack. They're all in here. What do I not have? Oh. Uh. Hmm. Tell you what, we'll wait till we're on the ground. I'm going to ask all three of you guys. I'll give you a head start. You can think about it. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, we're on final. 2-3 at Platteville. Just about. These GoPros just, for no reason, shut down. This one I've shut down. They've already shut down three times. I had that problem on my Baja trip. All right. So I got to start slowing down because this airplane with this swap wing, it doesn't go down and slow down at the same time. In fact, give you a little insight. So when you're flying this caliber of aircraft, ATC is making the assumption it's so not, from EO, Papa, it's not a requirement, but they're making the assumption the that you're, you're going to descend at 2,000 feet. The, uh, That's standard for us. For okay. from EO, so if I'm sitting out here at 35,000 feet, and they tell me to descend to Mather, and I dial in 2,000 feet a minute, and I pull the power levers all the way to idle, the airplane will slow to 220 knots in the descent. The problem is, my gear speed and my flap speed is 200 knots. But it will come all the way down at 220 knots at dead idle. So how do you get to gear and flap speed? You've got to get your brain 30 minutes ahead of what you're doing and plan. And our big stripe 776, yeah. one three thousand. That's where it gets people. Level one nine zero. Big stripe seven seven six, Oakland Center. Climbing things all two three zero. Flight level two three zero. Big stripe seven seventy six. Southwest twenty nine thirty six two four zero. That is where Southwest these things get people in trouble. They run, run away from it. But then via the slammer five. Uh, I mean, I've heard everybody there says you've got to be ahead of the plane, but half an hour ahead. Yeah, yeah. you got to be a half an hour in front of it, or you're in trouble. It's half an hour ahead of right now. Didn't hang it. One two one point two five. Get that. I'm already set up to land. Oh yeah. I'm already set up to land. The ILS is set up. The, the system is loaded. Five eight Quebec contact NorCal approach one two three point seven. Good day. Twenty three seven. Have a good day. Thanks for your help. Five eight Quebec. Frontier flight six twenty seven. Contact NorCal. Yeah, I'm already set up to land. And I'm a dead idle, by the way. That's it. Just gliding. NorCal from area five eight Quebec. Uh, turning back inbound for uh, Mayfair. From area five eight Quebec NorCal Phoenix Jack Mel service two nine or nine or eight. Stay route two, please. Advise the flight. We're idle. I have uh, uh, Romeo, and we're 8,900 in the descent right now. Have a contact approach 127.4. 4, have a good day. Lasseville. North Cal Premier 858 Quebec's back with you, 8,300 descending uh, back into uh, Mather. I forgot where I was going. Premier 858 Quebec, North Cal Premier Treasure. I said Placerville, and I started to say Placerville. <laughs> this would fit in Placerville, and it fits in Camera Park. That good Placerville. It's just so smooth and quiet. There's no thrashing of a piston in. Yeah, it is. And that's what people don't understand. You know, and I'm not, I'm not knocking turboprop airplanes by any means. They have a great purpose in our, in our business industry, but. You go fly from Austin, Texas to here in a King Air or a Pilatus or anything like that, and then fly from Austin, Texas to here in this or the Citation, and you will find a huge level of difference of how tired you are. Oh, really? Yeah. The, 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 the droning of the propellers, vibration, it wears on the human body. And it actually is tiring, and people don't realize it. Mm. Um, and the pressurization. These things have a better pressurization system in it for higher altitudes. So you're flying at a low, lower cabin pressure all the time. Even though we're higher, we're flying at a lower cabin pressure. What do you pressurize this at, like, 30,000 feet? Uh, 30,000? Oh, I'm only at about 4,800-foot cabin. Oh, wow. Um, I can get a 6,000-foot cabin at 41,000 feet. Yeah. Uh, November 236, Romeo, Papa. So at 41,000 feet, my body, uh, two, three, six, Romeo, my body Papa, thinks that I'm at Tahoe. Yeah. Project me, yeah. 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 Uh, probably just pick up a visual, uh, I think they're on 2-2 two, two right, since we're kind of almost doing a straight end. All right, now let me show you something fun. Let's do it. 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 Let's do it.
Well, we're going to go here to approach. I'm going to go down here for two, three, six, to our runways. We're going to pick runway two, two, two right two, three, six, five, 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 direct. for the five mile five, extension five. to execute that. And then I need to go to performance. Let me reset that because it kicks it off when I do that. Next, send. And then I go to legs. Now I'm going to go direct to that waypoint that I just created. Execute that. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to VNAV, and this thing is going to fly a visual approach, just like an ILS. That you just entered manually, that you I made just, out. I just made a visual approach, and I put it in VNAV, and you're going to get right here, a little window is going to open up with a snowflake in it. There it is, it just opened. And when it comes down to the center line, it's going to act like a glide slope, and I'm going to fly a visual approach that looks like an ILS. Now think about when you're going into those airports that you've never been to and you're unfamiliar with them and trying to find that runway. Load it, follow it. Trust the instruments. I put in like, I'll usually put in like a five mile turns to turn me in. It'll do it for you. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the checklist. Departure Southwest 2564, 1600. Uh, climb, uh, stay of the city, except maintain 9000. Mission lights are on. Mission Ice projection I don't need, windshield heat I don't need, those I don't need. Altimeters are set all the way around. Ending weights are calculated. Feels good. Landing lights are on, recognition lights are on. Cabin sides are on, ignitions. See your snowflake coming down? You hear that two tones? Right. That says it's good. It's getting ready to intercept. A vertical path. Because this has a vertical path in it. So the ignition's on, on. I just turned them on. But is For that takeoff and landing. Oh. They're, they're like a piezoelectric on your just barbecue. Correct. So when you're cruising, they're off. Oh, it did it. Look at that. All by itself. Look where the runway is. We hardly need to be here. So I have horizontal guidance here, and I have vertical guidance here on a visual approach. Think about that one. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Okay, we're coming in for a notch of flaps. So where that's really nice, Mark, is when I have, when I'm flying an arrival procedure, departure, one, two, three point seven. and the arrival procedure has a whole bunch of step downs in it. Oh, okay. And they tell me, descend via the XYZ arrival. So all I do is I go to the chart, and I dial in the very bottom altitude of that arrival. Now, that might be 6,000 feet, and I might be at 30,000 still out here. But I set 6,000, and I go to VNAV, and it makes every one of those steps. Man, that takes a workload off. So all i got to do is this right here. This manage the throttle. Manage the throttle. Manage speed. Speed. That's exactly right. It's amazing. It is. Like a bloody spaceship. <laughs> LNR Cal American 2940-1600. Keep it in perspective. Re remember, this is a 2009 airplane. Now go buy a 2023 airplane. It's only another level. All right. Go like that. Speed checks. And we're not going to let go of the gear handle until we can do what? 64 North Cal 12 3.7. Until you know it's down. Three greens and no red. Kadek made the tower. Born tower, five eight back today. You know, six Romeo Papa to send and maintain four thousand. Made the tower from eight five eight back with you. Visual to your right. Number eight five eight Quebec runway two two right clear left. Okay, Mark, look on your airspeed tape. You see that green line? All right on your airspeed tape. What is making that green line be there? Number 858, come back, did you copy? Everything you've entered into it. Hey, firm, sir. Uh, clear to land, 22 right. Everything you've entered 20, into 2500. Okay. That's my angle of attack indicator. Do not go below it. Okay. But my approach speed is below it. Oh. Is that accounting for ground effect or something? Look. Oh, yeah, I'm going to flap, sorry. Watch the green line move. I'm not going to touch the throttle. Watch the green line move. So suddenly, now I'm suddenly okay. And you feel the plane pitch. Yeah. Because where the flaps goes, the nose goes. Because there's no um, looking out the window to see them because the wings are way back. Yeah. So see, now my approach speed 
is above my angle of attack. Or I'm safe. But you See how that works? See how that tells me? But you would never have known that if the flaps hadn't come down, if Correct. that hadn't been there. Correct. You would have been flying to the V approach number, and guess what would have happened? Oh. Exactly right. 350 kilo, kind of departure, no. flight. Departure, 350 kilo, I'm going to hand fly this for giggles. All right, so we're on final. We have three greens, no reds. The lift dump is unlocked. Autopilot, yaw damper are away. The flaps are at land. The ignitions are on. Landing lights, recognition lights are on. The checklist is complete, and we are cleared to land. Now it's nothing more than just an airplane that you got to deal with speed control on. Let your approach speed, let it fly. Like I said, this is a straight leg airplane, so it lands a little bit One stiff. Thousand. Okay. Citation. You could put a citation on the ground without your passengers even knowing it if you know how to do it. The tower, November 236, Romeo, Papa, 500. visual 2-2 two, two right. There were 500 off the ground. We're right on approach speed. We're still on our vertical path. We're still on our course, our visual approach, right to the end of the runway. All right, we are on short final. Reconfirm. Three greens, no reds, full flaps. Lift up is unlocked, and we are, in fact, cleared to land. Now, if you look, my V ref speed, which is cali or, which is 50 feet above the end of the runway, is below my V ref or my AOA line. But I can safely do that with the nose down in landing configuration. Oh. So I go to idle right now. We're going to glide our way down there. So it's just gliding like a 172. Always keep it on the center line. Don't flare it. Well, he might have done that before. Number six, show me a pop. I'm going to let it go because it's easier on my brakes. These brakes are about twenty-six thousand dollars a set. Hop around with two-two right for the left. Two left, two-two right, six, show me a pop. So even the flaps are still down now. Everything is out. I haven't touched the thing but the power and the brakes. Okay, we're clear of the runway. Now I can bring the flaps up. I can turn the ignitions off. Bring the lift up, up and lock it. Turn off the strobe lights and the landing lights. Turn off my hot items. Okay. Reset my trim for takeoff. Okay. And that's a good portion of my after landing checklist. I'll deal with the rest when we get in. Turn the oxygen off. Cage that one. Don't do that on the runway. Alright, so ice protection's off, pedostatic heat is off, windshield's off, transponder is automatic, radar's off, ignitions are off, flaps are up and indicated. Lift up is locked. Trim is reset. Landing lights are off. Parking brake is not set. We're not using it right now. They're going to move the airplane. The oxygen is off. Defrost is off. Banana ice is off. Standby gyro is caged. Bleeder, we have to go still. Not because it's running the air conditioner. Yeah. Because what is it outside right now? 90 something? That's. I'm showing 32. Wow. Well, actually, excuse me, 29. Maybe 100. You know? Yep. It's going to be hot today. It's supposed to be really hot Wednesday. And then, then it's supposed to go down in the 80s. Good. I'm ready. So am I. Well, I'm British. Everything above 80 is hot. <laughs> I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> Mike, that was brilliant. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, Mark. It was Anytime. More than, more than I could ever have expected. Anytime. I'm glad I could help. Thanks. Mark at Skywagon University. We just flew it. This is Mike Bigler. Um, if you liked it, subscribe on the link. Click on the little bell for notifications and watch the earlier video about the technical aspects of this Premier One. Thanks very much.